Is our God nothing more than an alien race? This what-if proposition should blow the socks off the Christian fundamentalist, especially when I show him how my wild theory makes more sense than his. Today we have a what-if video, something that might make most people think, even regular Christians, but will also offend and anger fundamentalist Christians. And that's that, what if the entire concept of God that we know actually is derived from aliens? And hang on to the end of this video, because I think I have a very good endpoint in terms of this possible hypothesis versus the one the Christian fundamentalist presents that the Bible is the literal word of God. The origin of this video started with me watching a movie. A lot in Hollywood is garbage, but sometimes they make you think. The movie was with Nicolas Cage called Knowing. Basically, it was about an alien race who gave select children prophecy by writing a series of numbers that once decoded, translated to major disastrous events in human history and more importantly future ones, the most significant, the destruction of the world. And right before the world was destroyed due to a malfunction of our friendliest star, Nicolas Cage's son was gathered up, as well as a little girl from another, and they were transported to a different galaxy and placed on another identical Earth. The last scene showed several spaceships, dropping what could be construed as probable pairs of children as well, to start over and repopulate the world one day. Now this is interesting to me, because if one thinks about infinity, which is hard to comprehend in the human brain, one has to consider that there not only exists an identical Earth, but an endless amount of identical Earths, due to the nature of the definition of infinity. It's a mind boggler, I know. Herbert Spencer, in his book First Principles, believes that the very definition of infinity is so much one that we can't comprehend in our inferior human mind that it actually proves the existence of God, as only a superior being could possibly understand it concretely. But in the concept of infinity, you not only have to consider the possibility of alien races, but the certainty of them. An endless number will be inferior to humans, and an endless number will be superior to humans. And since time has no beginning as well, alien races have had an endless time to advance themselves. So if endless races have had endless time to advance themselves, you would have to consider not only the possibility, but again the certainty that their method of transport has crossed our galaxy and has been transporting across our galaxy since the beginning of our own planet because you had an endless time before Earth for them to develop these advancements. You have to consider that the replication of many types of Earths will happen over and over in the infinite future. It is mind-boggling the probability of everything being ordered in a certain way for life to be produced on a planet. But again, we are dealing with the concept of infinity, which means you have infinite numbers of chances for this probability to become a reality. Well, what if the construction of Earth was set in motion by something else? What if the construction of our universe was set in motion by something else? Like that very alien nation. I'm not claiming validity to this notion, it's just something interesting to think about. Let's say you had an ancient race, a race that was hundreds of times advanced more than us before our Earth was even formed. A group that was traveling from galaxy to galaxy before even the Big Bang. If they're doing that, they probably have a pretty good grasp on chemistry and physics, or whatever physics exists in their galaxies. And say they landed on Earth in its neophyte days, implanted all over the terrain and the waters specific proteins simply to see if they would produce life. Let's call it a long-range study, much like we conduct today. And maybe these beings live to be millions of years old, who knows? And then periodically through time, they check back and see the results of their work. After all, how many supposed sightings of UFOs are there, in the past and the present? Because of their advanced technology, they're pretty good at zipping in and out of our airspace, but every once in a while they get caught observing the rats in the maze. So they put these proteins on Earth and see how they develop, watch us grow from the Neanderthal to the modern day man, watch tribes, states, and nations form, look at our wars and conflicts from afar, like we would watch a snake in a box swallowing a mouse, and then one day decide that their little experiment has gone awry, has created entirely too much evil on the planet, they zap an adjustment to the sun that causes a giant solar flare, end of experiment, end of Earth. 
Except instead of Christ appearing, a spaceship is disappearing on its way back to its original galaxy. Hopefully, that was entertaining to you. These are the things I think about in the small hours of the morning. But here is that end point. That ridiculous theory I just proposed is a lot less ridiculous than the fundamentalist Christian's theory. First of all, because of the nature of infinity, it's pretty much given with mathematical certainty that these races do exist. And it would also be given with the same certainty that many will be more advanced than us, by far. It's not something I would read from a book. The nature of mathematics would show this. It's more plausible that there's a race of aliens out there that were responsible for the creation of life on Earth than believing it came from an invisible god because the alien would be concrete proof or at least within the realms of probability in an infinite system versus an invisible god which is not concrete at all. I think Sam Harris, the late Christopher Hitchens, and all the other atheists would agree that this proposition is more logical than the fundamentalist Christians. That an alien race continues to visit us periodically versus an invisible god that comes down to create man, destroy man, through the nature of Sodom and Gomorrah fires and the Great Flood. And think about this. We don't know much about our surroundings, not on a macro level. Even the long-range Hubble telescope only gives us so much access to an infinite space. Us looking outside of our gravitational pull would be much like ants looking at the human face that stares through the plexiglass of the ant farm. And if an alien race does have all this advanced technology to travel across galaxies, why wouldn't they conduct experiments on other planets just like we conduct experiments on our own and in our research of our own neighboring planets? See, this would actually make more sense, Christian fundamentalist because I am presenting something that can be more concrete versus you are presenting something that is invisible. I am presenting a hypothesis that has logical sequence of probability, and you are presenting a magic man in the sky based on a book by man regarding miracles that can't be proved, all stemming from the Yahweh that we can't see. I think if I were in a simple logic debate, my proposition of the world being created by possibly an alien race would score more points than your proposition of an invisible God. Because remember, Christian fundamentalist, everything you know has been formulated by other humans on one little speck in one galaxy that exists in an infinite system, infinite galaxies, infinite planets, and infinite possibilities of creation. Now, if you like this video, check out my one where I hypothesize whether or not the great Yeshua would have visited other planets as well. Click the card at the end of the video. And now here's some more fiction. The Second Fall. My tale of the offbeat apocalypse, sure to offend the fundamentalist, and probably everyone else. Link is in the video description as well as the banner, and I will see you next time as we once again take that sword of reason and reality and thrust it right through the heart of ignorance.